Imagine if he could do 1600 damage in a tier 10 tank destroyer. Well, you can, and that is the T-57 Heavy. This is one of the best heavy tanks that I've played, one of the more interesting heavy tanks that I've played, and definitely not your typical heavy tank, and that is because this tier 10 American heavy tank does not particularly get the most armor. However, it does get that alpha damage that can really make up for it, and in fact, makes it a hell of a lot more competitive than you might think, even though it can be penned by a lot of vehicles. And so, yeah, today's video is going to look at how you can actually deal with autoloaders, why people get them so wrong, and also how you can make things like the T-57 Heavy work by having a look at what this tank is all about. And I highly recommend at some point on World of Tanks you go towards the 57 Heavy because it genuinely feels just one of the nicest in the game. So let's have a look at how we managed to pull off a really, really good game on Redshire. And this is one of the maps that I really enjoy playing regardless of what tank we're going to be playing in. And so, yeah, let's see how it ends up. But straight off the bat, we're going to push our way towards uh, the enemies who are going to be on this ridgeline. And we're going to use this ridgeline to hopefully deal a bit of damage towards people who have overcommitted. And when you're playing autoloaders, Overcommitting vehicles are like your dream. This is what you want to be finding in the game because you can find them over pushing. You can see them pushing past where they should be and you can really deal a lot of damage. And so far, this is just genuinely one of my favorite ways of dealing with a lot of players. And it is like the anti YOLO mechanic that you can see in the game. It's similar to that of things like the FE 4005. All of these high alpha tanks are very good at stopping people from just YOLOing you because they're going to take a ton of damage. And if they do YOLO you, you've just got to make sure that you have a bit of team support to help you out if they come down and you deal all your shots of damage and then your teammates finish all them off for the rest of it. Now, uh, the problem with the 57 Heavy is it doesn't get the best armor, but it does get some armor. And you can see there, someone went for a shot. It was a TD by the looks of things with 750 alpha as we blocked that in the top right of the corner. So you can see this in your games. Obviously, that gives you an indication as to what tank it could potentially be. So use that to your knowledge and therefore you know how to play or to not play within the game. And now that I know that there's a TD back there, we're not going to overcommit anymore. And so, yeah, then we can avoid taking any future damage. And one of the biggest things about using autoloaders is positioning. And positioning is one of the biggest keys to success because of the fact that uh, the difference between you and a single shot gun, other than the fact that you have four shells, is that you are not able to consistently attack opponents. You can't just keep on going at them. You can't keep them from YOLOing you during that period of time after you fired all your shells, which is, as I said before, where you need teammates to help you out. Now, this TVP he keeps poking the same ridge. Don't quite know why he's doing that, but, you know, hey-ho. Uh, players tend to do whatever they want to do on this game. Uh, so we're going to hopefully get a couple of shells. Now, we land one into the KPZ, and then this is the ultimate in what you don't want to happen, where you fire a couple of shells, and then you're left to reload. So, um, yeah, with only two shells in the mag, I decide, mm, are we going to get another one into him? I do wait until he pokes. We try and put one into him, but unfortunately it doesn't hit. And then, oh, can we get another into him? Yes, we can, leaving him on 900 damage. And we've picked up 1,500 damage, which, given that we're three and a half minutes into the game, it's not particularly insane. Um, so we're going to have to, hopefully, uh, kind of think about our long-term strategy within this game. And thinking about longevity within your game is where autoloaders become insanely good. And then, uh, of course, going for oh, Amorax on vehicles is also nice, as we Amorak the KP750T. That's a feel as bad for him. But, of course, when you are playing in autoloaders, uh, you do need to have a consistent damage output throughout the game if you have any chances of actually winning. Now, one thing that you need to be doing is going for tracking damage as well, because if you track someone, it makes it infinitely easier for you to keep them locked in place where because of that two second between your shells and in a 57 heavy you have six seconds to be able to do that 1600 damage and 1600 damage will ruin anybody's day on this game including but not limited to the ruthless and the ruthless is the tank that is a bit of a pain on this flank and as well as the tvp and stuff like that uh, they were the biggest threats to me and obviously if we're taking any td hits but that's just a given and um 
Yeah, it looks like the eastern side of the map is kind of taking a big brunt of the force. There's a lot of tanks over here as well and kind of hiding in the background that we need to be aware of, uh, but they're not too much of a threat at the moment. But unfortunately, because I'm loading AP rounds in this, uh, it's a little bit of a pain for us to pen the roofless in the turret. And of course, we don't want to be taking any shots from that guy. He ends up bouncing, and then we're going to hopefully get one into the cupola. Now, you want to be aiming for the lower portion of the cupola of the T124 or the roof it's kind of where you can pen it but unfortunately with the standard rounds that you have in the 57 heavy that's not usually the case you can't really pen it even if you do hit that lower portion you have to find the side of the turret etc and so the heat rounds are going to save us here or maybe make it a little bit easier for us but it doesn't matter because the batch at 25t goes over and what you don't want to do is what the batch at 25t just did which is go over to do one shot of damage lose all of your hit points and then get taken out of the game at which you can never do any more damage in the game that you're in but what is perfect is when you find yourself up against medium tanks who uh, obviously took you for granted and uh, yeah mm, a full shot of damage there 5,000 damage total as well and there is definitely someone at the back the waffle e100 to be precise who is sitting there waiting for people to overcommit and the 704 goes in is he going to take any hits yes he does that's the first one that's the second one and the third one misses so this is what you don't want to do. I'm very well aware that the Waffle E100 is very powerful, has a five shot autoloader with uh, 500 damage per shell. And of course, then it also gets the opportunity to load a 750 millimeter, uh, which has the uh, kind of th three shots of 750 damage, which you definitely don't want to be taking. Um, so yeah, you've got to be careful as to what you're doing with waffles because they can be very, very annoying as you get towards the later stages and because you've probably taken a few shots of damage during the entire game. Now luckily in this game, we have done 4,900 damage. We've blocked 750 and we've got a tiny bit of assistance, uh, only 131. There's not been really anyone that we've been spotting just purely on our own. And you can see here, we're going for the AMX here. And unfortunately for us, we don't manage to connect the second one, but mm -mm -mm, I love hitting AVREs, literally. Oh, it's so perfect when you hit one of those. Um, but he gets taken out by the Ruthless on our team, which is honestly a, a feels good. And we're up to 6.1k damage so far, but hopefully we can deal a little bit more damage. But obviously the problem when you're playing autoloaders is this, is you're kind of sat in the open, you've not got really anyone to shoot, you can't shoot because you're reloading, and you've just got to rely on the fact that you're putting obstacles between you and your opponents. And putting obstacles between you and your opponents is the biggest thing that you can do in an autoloader to actually deal a lot more damage and survive longer. Uh, because most people, they'll go in. Like you saw with the bat chat, he went in, he got one shot of damage. Yes, it was helpful because he removed the ruthless, but he died for it. And so he's never getting any more shells off. And also, uh, he could have quite easily taken out the ruthless if he wanted to um, without actually taking any damage. And that is because he could have come down to where we were and then actually circled around, used the rock that we were using to be able to avoid the waffle and then hit the ruthless. And uh, that way he may have only taken one hit as opposed to all of the hits that he did and got taken out for it. And so that's kind of how I like to play autoloaders, making sure to put as many obstacles between you and your opponents, peaking only when you're fully reloaded. There's no point in peaking when you aren't reloaded because uh, you're going to take hits, then they're going to go back behind cover, and then you're not going to be able to hit them when you actually are reloaded. So only poke when you're reloaded in an autoloader. It is literally never worth it because you're going to lose a ton of damage. The only time that I would kind of poke is not even in a poking situation. It's actually when you kind of want to go in to uh, get a bit more damage. And uh, you really want to make sure that you're repositioning whilst reloading. So if you need to move, make sure that you're not moving when you're reloaded unless you really have to. Uh, because you want to make sure that you fire off all your shells, then you can move and stuff like that. Now, this is the battle of the autoloaders, literally. Uh, it's the Waffly 100 here just being balanced. And unfortunately for us, we don't actually evade any of the shells from the Waffle. As you can see, the T57 Heavy's turret is not amazing and we get taken out. But it's absolutely fine because I wasn't intending to survive that encounter with the Waffle. We just wanted the extra damage to push our total up to 7,700 within this game with 1,500. XP as well. So really nice game here. The Leopard had a fantastic one as well. And we pick up what nearly 8,000 combined damage. Uh, and yeah, that would have definitely gone up on your marks of excellence if you were going for it in this tank. So 
We, of course, have three marks in it. We've played it a lot. It's one of my most played actual vehicles in the game. So, yeah, it was just a really, really fun tank to play. But it's not everything because everything doesn't go perfect in your games. Let's see how you can kind of change it when it comes to fighting on corners and stuff like that. Now then, this next game is on Savoragos, one of the newer maps in the game. And it is a really, really interesting one because of the fact that you get... Uh, a lot of corner fighting, a lot of heavy tanks sitting on corners, and when you have the good heat, heat rounds that we do in the 57 Heavy, you can deal a lot of damage pretty quickly, and they can feel rather inferior because, yes, they may get one shot into you, but you're going to get all four. At least that's what you're aiming to do, and um, you have to play like that if you want to succeed because uh, you need to make sure that the times that you're poking isn't when you're only going to get one shot off, but actually when you're going to be able to track someone or have a good opportunity to track someone, deal damage, and then consistently hit them again and again and again, and hopefully we're going to be able to see that in this replay. Uh, of course, this isn't the highest damage replay, but the whole point about it is I want to show you what it's like when you do fight on corners with tanks like this. And of course, as we come around, we put one into the griller. It was uh, going to be a lucky shot to actually hit him, so I'm fine with, you know, if we missed or whatever. Um, we just wanted to go for it anyway. And of course, now he is on a one shot. He poked right around the corner, which is not ideal. And so, yeah, it got taken a ton of damage and we find ourselves a nice little uh, TVP, but I realise, hmm, the gorilla is going to come around. We hit him by what looks like straight in the turret, but it doesn't actually pen. Hmm, not ideal. And then the enemy artillery, who's a little rat, decides to fire AP, but luckily for us, he's, he doesn't even hit us. And of course, when you've got AP rounds loaded in artillery, you uh, deal no damage if you miss. Um, so, yeah, luckily for us... We're not taking any damage from the little piggy in the back of the map. But at this point, I don't really want to sit there. The artillery is looking at us, so we want to avoid getting hit by him. And so instead, we come to this location here. You can see the AMX is also over here. And we find ourselves with the heat rounds loaded to fight this uh, Type 4 or Type 5 even. Um, which, of course, is very, very strong armor. Um, but the main weakness of the Type 5 is heat rounds, and the 57 Heavy gets those in abundance. And so, yeah, it's really nice to be able to use them against those strongly armored vehicles. And there you go, one into the Coppola, the E100, luckily, uh, who appears out of nowhere, by the way, um, manages to hit our teammate rather than us, which is good for us, but maybe not the teammate. Um, and then, of course, we don't want to be sat where we were because as soon as there's two different tanks who have different angles on you and you're an autoloader, once you've dumped out your clip, they then know. They're just going to come around that corner. They're going to get shots into you and you don't want that. Um, so we go for one into the E100. Of course, now we're not going to poke because you can see he's aiming directly at this corner and so we're not going to do anything. We don't want to take a damage. We've got three shells in the magazine. We can't guarantee that we're going to pen him. And instead, we actually go for the tracks of the Progetto, locking him in place. And then, of course, the f kill shot, the E100, comes forward, saves his teammate there. Um, probably not intentional, but hey-ho, what, what can we do? Uh, but we did pick up 3k damage, so I'm not too fussed on how that went. But so far, yeah, nice little 3.5k combined damage game, which would be somewhat decent if you were going for Marks of Excellence. You're not going to go up, you're probably going to go down, but the game is still kind of fresh. There's still 10 tanks left on the enemy team. We've got heat rounds loaded here, which uh, are good for strongly armored vehicles, but they are not good for if uh, you come up against a tank with spaced armor or tracks. But we managed to pen three. It's just a shame that the one where we could have got lots more damage managed to bounce. So uh, yeah, a bit unfortunate there, but hey ho, it is what it is. And sometimes that happens in modern tanks, even if you're you know, you know, know, aiming correctly or whatever. Maybe we could have aimed slightly better there, but I wanted to get out all four shots. Um, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately it just didn't work. Um, now you see I made a misplay there. I actually kept one round in the magazine. We only have one heat round le left. And essentially we re reloaded that one round for 20 seconds. So obviously you don't want that. You don't want that for when you come up against someone to only have one round in the magazine. Um, so what we do is we reload a full AP round clip. Because uh, yeah, having one round is not worth actually not being able to fire off uh, more. Even if you do suffer on penetration with the AP rounds on this vehicle. So given that we are kind of... Uh, in this situation where we're probably not going to get any damage on the E100, as you can see, he got taken out pretty quickly. We now need to go towards the ST1 or the STI, whatever you want to call it, because he's now pushing uh, towards the teammate. And hopefully we can get a little shot into the backside of him. He looks like he's going away from us. He doesn't spot us there, which is brilliant. We're going to surprise him here. 
here he is going for the tracking shot of course it goes up into the rear angled plate but don't worry because uh, RNG said yes and manages to set him on fire with the next shell so uh, yeah hmm unfortunate for the uh, STI but very fortunate for us and now we're taking a reload obviously with only two shells in the clip and uh, quite a bit of damage left on the enemy team there's uh, no uh, no one for us to actually hit so we might as well reload the full clip and there you go one into the griller fired another one but someone else hit him and then it's time to go for uh, the 279e which i reload a full clip for because yeah might as well get as many as we can for when we see this guy and we're probably not going to have to wait all too long and there's not too many teammates around even though uh, they're all penning him and yeah i didn't realize it was a bat chat and then the ruthless decides to amarack him yeah, and we end up with a 279E turret landed straight on us. So, um, yeah, victory nonetheless and a okay game, 4.8K. But you can see all of those kind of tactics come into play, even if they didn't come into play that well, because there were so many vehicles that got taken out so quickly and we just weren't on the right flank to be able to deal lots of damage. Um, but we didn't take a whole lot of damage in that game and we worked really well to be able to pick up 5,000 damage for only taking a couple hundred in return. So hopefully that showcase cases you auto loaders but also this very very strong and really really brilliant heavy tank that is not particularly a heavy tank but it is a very very strong vehicle in the game right now on world of tanks console make sure that you do subscribe if you aren't already as we're hoping to get to 17,000 by the end of the year and your guys' support has been insane if you don't want to just your viewership means a lot to me so yeah just thanks very much for watching these videos and i will see you in the next one have a great rest of the day Goodbye.